hi there. This is a, a webinar a video on making a marvelous transition into retirement. And for you that are still working, your job is not your identity once you leave your workplace. We're going to talk about the things that you need to consider to do a better job of planning and having a marvelous um, transition. So uh, I like to start with some um, fun things. Getting old, that's none of my business. It's always to, good to um, have a little levity in what we're doing here. And uh, let's see, how about this one? That moment when you realize you're getting old. Hey, we're all getting older every day. Now, I don't call myself old, but I did refer to myself recently as getting older because I plan to live to 100, and I hope you are too. So um, I did this presentation recently, and um, I wanted to um, give you the advantage of hearing it also, because I think I had a lot of great nuggets in there that might uh, help a lot of people. So I'm a um, recognized as an applied behavioral scientist, a certified knowledge manager, a competent Toastmaster, a podcaster, author, and um, an Invite Change graduate. And I'm honored by all that. But what many people don't know is that I've gone most of my life uh, feeling invisible because as a child, that was my strategy for feeling safe in a sexually abusive home. My name is Sharon Rolfe. And I've overcome some difficult things and came out on the other side. And I want to give you the benefit of the things I've learned. So today I'm going to make you familiar with the term holistic retirement planning and share with you three keys to have a marvelous transition into retirement. And these three keys are how to increase your mental strength, the secret glue to retirement and how the easiest way to find it. And the number one thing you must discover before you die. The benefits for you uh, is that when you apply these three keys is that you'll find new ways to smile at the world. Leave a legacy for someone you care about and do things you never knew you were capable of. So I only have 45 minutes or so with you today, and that isn't nearly enough time to share absolutely everything you need to know about holistic retirement planning and the transitions in retirement. So I promise before we're done, we're, I'll show you where you're going to go to get more information on this. But I want to give you the most valuable keys so you can do, uh, can right now achieve outstanding results. So let's think about transitions. Um, you may or may not still be working and uh, change in transitions can be exciting, adventurous, perhaps like a blind date, uh, not knowing exactly what the outcome is going to be, but you're committed to the journey. So thinking about where you are today, um, does your job require how much head and how much heart? On a ratio of 100, how much of your job is uh, tied to your head, brains, mind? And um, how much is from your heart? Um, I think when I was, my last job at Boeing was, um, I would say maybe 60% head and 40% heart. So uh, my intent is to set you and your friends up to have confidence, possibilities, excitement, smile, curiosity, freedom, inspiration, and aspiration. I'm going to share with you stories of possibilities and what to do to make your retirement marvelous and a few tips for your friends too. You'll benefit from this session by learning to live from your heart since retirement is your time to shine and you're the boss. Now, we all know people who are retired. Um, should you know anyone who seems to be struggling since retiring, 
after today, you'll be able to give them a new perspective on what's possible, perhaps help them dust off some of those dreams that they've had and remember, help them remember what makes them happy. I'm a retirement and spark coach, behavioral scientist, and I'm 74. Now, my story about feeling invisible is pretty common to middle children. Um, can you relate to that? I was the middle of five, but yet because I told a, chose a regular career of working diligently, responsibly, reliably, um, as the culture was to fit in in those days, it had little to do with my potential. Oh, yeah, over time, I, I did um, developed my creativity secretly and did a bit of speaking. And when I retired, um, I, I followed a piece of advice immediately because I, I was told have something else to go to. Um, and in my case, it was a coaching program. Yet I soon faced another dilemma and that I started wondering, how do I know if I'm productive? Well, I had an aha moment coming back from coaching class on lunch break one day, and I slapped the table and stomped my foot and said, it's not okay to be invisible. Where did that come from? I surprised myself. And um, uh, now I, I have always been single uh, without kids or family close by. So my retirement is quite different. But it was also different in the fact that my in my family, I was a lifelong learner and paid my way through college and including nights and weekends and even a vacation to get my master's degree. But my journey in classes also took me through the difficult recovery work from sexual abuse. So a financial planning is the only retirement preparation I had and helping your friends and clients and yourself to realize the emotional, mental, and social transitions that happen when we no longer have a paycheck or a business card is what baby boomers are wanting included along with financial planning. And that's what the holistic retirement planning refers to. And as a behavioral scientist, I'm the perfect one to help bring this to light for you. So, um, uh, and this is also a, an extension of maybe some of the services you're already getting for retirement planning that I can help come along side and um, expand and enrich your services that you're already getting. So uh, re this slide, I really, I, even though it's called a permanent work, perma worksheet, I, re I wanted to refer to it as emotional reflection. Now, you, we get all kinds of positive emotions from our jobs. We often don't see it that way, but let's think about it. You get joy and gratitude and serenity and love that makes us feel vibrant and alive. But our jobs often... Uh, help us feel inspired or unstoppable because we're so good at it. Um, our engagement is um, uh, valuable. You know, we're we're contributing to something that's um, useful and needed, and we feel alive and uh, you know in that zone of um, producing things. Um, our colleagues and and people we go to meetings with they help energize us and and help us laugh and support and thrive. And uh, oftentimes we're contributing to a cause that's larger than ourselves. I remember feeling that way when I spent 19 years at GTE. And you know, that sense of accomplishment is just um, priceless and brings us a lot of uh, satisfaction and you know that identity thing. But if you were to fill out this worksheet now oop, uh, from work, uh, that's one thing, but then in retirement, um, how are you going to replace those feelings, those situations of being with um, other people and colleagues and, and contributing? Now in retirement, you have to fill this 
avoid going forward. And that's pretty, um, pretty challenging. And I'm here to support you in that. And, um, you know, at my, at my last job, I heard that um, you die within three years of retiring. I, that just hit me in the heart. That, that hurt. And I want to do something about that because when uh, this emotional transition happens uh, and your job is all gone, it can start a downhill slide into depression, isolation, and addiction. If it's not checked, having all this free time on your hands is uh, can become a heavy burden. And um, that's especially after your spouse dies. So um, it's critical to get supportive guidance and uh, on this journey of emotional transition. So the Dr. Ken Dykewell, uh created these um, four pillars of retirement of in retirement that there's health and family and purpose and financial. And his point is that if any one of these change, it can affect the others because they're they're kind of connected. So the other slide was emotional transition. This is more physical transition, I mean, what you can see and touch. So uh, physical health, besides the health that you have when you're when you retire, uh, there's also the adjustments of hearing and eyesight and balance and strength. And I've been um, challenged with some of those lately. Um, then uh, since, since asking for help can be a challenge, um, it would be valuable to have us be accountable to someone to help us deal honestly with our physical reality. And then there's the family. That includes your kids, uh, your grandkids coming along or growing up or needing your help or dying that can change our plans in so many ways. And how much and what kind of help do you want to commit to providing when you're retired, like caregiving or finances? Uh, the purpose pillar is about finding a new purpose. And there's um, about 19% of us who never had kids. And oftentimes when our jobs are gone, um, our grandkids become the purpose. Um, and it's especially important to have a new purpose. If your job was your purpose or your service that you provided that meant a lot to you, what are you going to do without that? And this is where um, the feeling of being useless or bored can really slip in. And we don't often realize that purpose provides us with life's meaning. Now, it can be internal, it can be external and social, or it can be spiritual. But it's a pillar that needs intentional, deliberate, and serious planning. And then with the financial pillar, um, he kind of takes a little bit of a different focus on this in that what's your legacy that you want to leave? Um, is it uh, values, wishes, personal possessions, or assets? Um, they're quite different. And uh, do we consider what we want to do with our finances as a, um, as a legacy? So I want to encourage you that now that you're the boss and it's your time to shine and I love this saying from Oprah feel the power that comes from focusing on what excites you hmm what excites me in retirement what an opportunity um, but it does take courage so on the, the three strategies that I said I was going to um, give you, show you. Um, I think keep, considering possibilities keeps us young. Uh, having things to look forward to, such as trips or growing, you know, learning a guitar or a language, counting your blessings is a, a strong, good one. And having something to look forward to, like maybe a trip or um, 
uh, graduation of your grandkids and something coming up is, is a good help. So on those three strategies, mental strength is, um, um, well, you, you've probably taken profiles or assessments over your career, but have you ever had training on mental strength? Well, this came up about four or five months into my retirement, and uh, Andy Shaw from the UK was presenting this, and I thought, hey, that sounds good to me. Let's check this out, and I'm really glad I did because it gave me a pivotal moment in my life that was a big aha. So Andy Shaw says that um, he he had been very successful in his uh, career, and yet he experienced a big downturn of events, and his life became full of worries and fears, and his mental strength was gone. His instincts told him that without being able to control his thinking, he'd never be able to fully control his life. Whoa. And he knew he was at an extreme turning point. And uh, he says mental strength is about uh, having the ability to choose on purpose and not by accident. Hmm. Um, so his solution was to pick a good, a really good memory that he loved. And especially when he imagined it in vivid detail, uh, like the sights and smells and what led up to that and um, just pleasure. And that gave him mental strength, being in the moment. And his warm memory was for him was giving his preschool son a ride in an airplane he was flying he i had always wanted to learn to fly well my warm memory that day came from when i was assigned to be a reader in a christmas program and, and i kind of looked around and, oh, nobody told me how to be a good reader <laughs> third grade and um so i kind of started looking at who was on tv and in front of people and the pastor and other people that were speaking and i can concluded that you need to speak up so people can hear you. You need to speak uh, uh, slow enough so people could understand you. And you needed to look at your audience once in a while. And my delight was when after uh, the Christmas program, uh, one or two people came up to me afterwards and said, I was their favorite reader. Wow, cool. Uh, I guess the big thing about that is I was noticed, somebody noticed the, the um, focus I put in on on doing a good job. So um, now when anything comes up in your day uh, that maybe makes you frustrated or ignored, ignored or, or annoyed, bored, um, when you're facing a difficult situation, and I always apply this to going into a meeting that you thought might be challenging or meeting with somebody that you didn't know whether it was going to work out for you or not, well, he says, recall this warm memory, hold it for 15 seconds, and then go into your situation. You'll have much better results. And um, they'll be without fear, worry, or stress. And <clears throat> after this event, <clears throat> I thought a, a couple weeks later, why, why just have one warm memory? Why don't I see how many I could come up with? And I made a list of, um, I don't know, nine or 10 things. And the shock was half of them were in front of people. Had I been in the wrong career? And um, I, I did have a profile that came uh, recently that said I was an influencer. I didn't believe it at the time, but I thought maybe I should you know, take some baby steps and see where this leads to. Maybe that was supposed to be what I um, had um, uh, inkling to do, what gave my heart pleasure. And um, the ripple effect is that I started doing a podcast. I became a queen of courage on Instagram, an author. And now I've set a goal to becoming an international speaker. So 
Carol Penny was another person who used her mental strength to overcome obstacles like Andy Shaw did. And I found her for my podcast because she'd won a Word from the Wise Award. And at the age of 66, Carol was forced into her early retirement because of a a life-changing automobile accident. She had been a music educator in her career, and about the same time, her husband, Carl, was entering stage four of his Alzheimer's journey. And uh, Carol is a heroic example of using positivity, not worry, to not only overcome her debilitating injuries, but also use them as an inspiration to further her love of uh, music with young children. She started noticing Carl came alive whenever he was making music with their toddler grandson. And Carol could see that intergenerational music with toddlers might, possibilities, be a good experience to bring into the adult day center in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And she went on to do develop a weekly music program for toddlers, for caregivers and seniors at the center. And it actually became a part of a feasibility study for intervention with seniors in, uh, with Alzheimer's and dementia. Now, Andy Shaw went on to say that controlling your thoughts allows you to control your life and create the life you desire. He went on to be um, uh, quite successful in his career. And he says mental strength is about having the ability to choose um, on purpose and not by accident. And it combines anxiety control with personal development. And it is uh, a challenge in um, to tackle and yeah, you come out, you can come out at difficult times as a stronger person. And uh, since becoming mentally strong takes time and patience, you might wonder what are the benefits? Well, the benefits are increased life satisfaction, patience, persistence, appreciating life more, uh, character strength, confidence, and taking risk and self image and courage. And it even helps you to overcome your bad habits, stress, criticism, fears, and negativity. So when I moved from uh, Seattle to Tampa, Florida for work, I made a big mental shift myself to control my thoughts and highly recommend it today. Um, Based on the passages in uh, the Bible of Joshua chapter one and two, There's many references to courage, being a good courage and great courage. Do not be afraid, be be courageous. And it strengthened my resolve about my career move because I didn't know very many people there. And um, I wanted to be, you know, uh, not going home too quick and giving up. And so I would stop my foot and say, I'm I'm not, I'm, I refuse to live my life based on fear. And um, now, as a result of that choice, I've lived without fear for 30 years, without cancer, without diabetes, without hospitals, or wrinkles. So uh, this I make these little art blocks, and this is one of my favorites. And uh, Dan Zadra is uh, the guy that started the Compendium Company. And I found this in a little magazine that worry is a misuse of imagination. And uh, to me, that is just profound. Now, I also want to mention that uh, a movie that kind of goes along with this mental strength Um, It was a TV movie where Meryl Streep played a mom struggling with a um, (laughs) narrow-minded, narrow-minded, what happened to my screen? Um, Medical establishment regarding her son's severe epilepsy that was unresponsive to the medications 
and she wanted them to try a controversial diet. Turned out to be the ketogenic diet. All right, so then key strategy number two is purpose, and that's the glue to retirement. There's huge benefits of having purpose um, in that you have meaning, you have contentment, you have fulfillment, happiness. Um, you live longer and you live in better health. Better health means lower health care costs. So um, when I was I learned that 31% of retirees struggle to find a new purpose in retirement, I knew I needed to help solve this problem. And as a teenager, I've always been enamored with potential. Um, of course, then it was my potential, but um, also, you know, your potential. And um, as a behavioral scientist, I started realizing there's a nugget of gold inside each one of us that um, might actually lead to your joy and purpose in life. So um, that's been my focus. Uh, last year, I wrote a book and um, to help with this. And so you could take baby steps in finding your, um, you know, do-it-yourself purpose. Um, and I recently, just recently created this little recipe for that might help you with your purpose. Um, you know, just because you no longer have a job anymore, you still have the education, all that education you got throughout your career. You have a ton of experience that you're bringing with you into retirement. You've got talent that, yeah, maybe you're not the trombone player or the debater you used to be, and it might need some dusting off. But um, as we age, we gain more wisdom as we reflect on how did life go and how did the decisions I make turn out. And then all those colleagues and friends and people that you've worked with and known over the years. And, um, and now you get to live from your heart. So um, all those added up to me equates to, to potential. All this free time and huge possibilities. And the chapters in my book are um, organized around the seven things most people want. Conserving time and resources, building a social network, gaining status, being generous, or the opposite, accumulating resources, and desire meaning. So um, I just recently, like in the last three, four months, there's come out this um, research from the Science of Purpose team of um, headed up by Aaron Hurst and Brandon Peel. And it's pretty startling statistics about the role of purpose in our lives. And individuals, you, your kids, your grandkids, with the connection to their purpose experience, increased wealth, leadership, effectiveness, and fulfillment. They learn twice as much. They are four times more engaged and 175% more productive. Wow. So retirement is a new lease on life, but nobody tells you maybe that you're the boss and you have a license to live from your heart and shine and um, cre be curious about all the possibilities you could create. And I actually have a resource list of possibilities I've uh, collected over about five years. And I have, um, I'd be glad to send it to you as a, as a free resource. And um, if you share your email with me, and I, my email is at the end here, that um, we can help each other out. Now, my mom said when you give to somebody, they get blessed and feel good. And so do I. So let's start thinking about all the ways you could volunteer. I want to transform the 48 hours a weekly TV watching time uh, into purposeful volunteering for meaning and um, engagement, you know, excitement. 
So currently 24% of retirees. So all the retirees, there's only 24% that are, are volunteering and their average is 2.3 hours a week. Now that's, that's not hard to do. Um, actually, I just was reading the book Give and Take by Adam Grant, and he said, well, try to make a goal of 100 hours a year, uh, but don't go over 800 hours a year. Um, and let me mention that when you volunteer, don't just take any that come along, but um, uh, try different ones out because you need to find where do you fit. And where can you matter and where can you make a difference? And hopefully you can find those all in the same place. And, you know, if they don't train you, keep moving because good places to volunteer will train you. So um, one of my first podcast guests was Joyce Major. And she realized that she needed a new purpose. She wanted to um, do something about social change and she had a burning desire for growth now she was 57 at the time and uh, she created her own dream of a year-long trip around the world doing community service um she spent a month in each country and booked her own travel plans and she did projects with lions uh, baboons, elephants, um, kangaroos, monkeys, orangutans, and elephants. She taught English in China, uh, Ukraine, Guatemala, and Spain, and even volunteered in some archaeology projects, restoration, sustainability, medical, and conservation projects. And then she wrote, came back and wrote the book, Smiling at the World. So. Um, uh, I'm I'm sure you'd enjoy that book because she even has a romance in along with her trip. So the third strategy now, let's take a big breath and um, we've covered a lot of material here, is uh, spiritual health or what could also be referred to as spiritual strength. And uh, one definition is inner inner truth. Are you okay with that? Or maybe you, we could call it um, hope or having an expectancy for life, courage, possibilities, curiosity. And it's often woven into um, our survival techniques. This is where we especially need some spiritual help or strength. So um, all kinds of transitions take a lot of courage and a leap of faith, and uh, I think maybe even to live wholeheartedly. So John Izo's book, Five Secrets You Must Discover Before You Die, uh, he learned early in his research that around 60 years of age is when people tend to be more reflective and results in more wisdom. And my book ties closely to his, uh, my work, Ties, ties closely to his first secret very beautifully. Be true to yourself. Are you aware that failure to do so is a major regret? Hospice nurses hear from the dying. Mm. Now, Jonathan ends his first secret with a story about a 71-year-old professor who saw a chasm of difference between his students who lived or followed their heart and those who did not. Whoa. Are you someone who says, someday I'll follow my heart? Are you the person you want to be in the world? Are you following your heart right now? What would it mean if you really follow your heart? Now, an amazing aha day in my life when I was when I got the courage to be true to myself. I'd started being curious about if there was a place for art at work. 
I've been making about a hundred or so of these little art blocks in various um, fabric. And, and it was my artwork for small spaces. In those days, cubicles was quite popular. And I'll never forget the day that I uh, got the nerve to stick out my neck and step into my boss's office at Boeing and show him my little blocks of wisdom. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, I love color. I love words of wisdom and I love sewing. So um, a novel idea to talk to my boss about this, huh? The amazing result was no criticism, no laughing, uh, just allowing me to try some possibilities. Well, there was an event coming up in two, three weeks on the production floor, and I, um, uh, their theme, well, I created some art blocks around trust because that tied into some of their theme, and I, we blew them up into big trust posters and, and posted them around the floor for, you know, decoration and helping people think. And um, now my art blocks are part of my brand. They're scattered throughout my book. And um, when we take words of wisdom and combine it with beauty, um, it goes in our head but in a different way. It gets processed in a different way. So I love to inspire people to live and express their heart. And I think that's where our joy is. Um, it helps us be more creative and share our uniqueness. And I do so as the queen of courage on Instagram. Be you. So I had a problem finding a guest for my podcast that I wanted to do. The last one I wanted to do on was on courage. I asked, I don't know, 10 or 12 people. And somebody finally referred to me uh, to Reverend Dr. Bob Nicholson. And to no surprise, he had a doctorate in divinity, right? But Dr. Bob was 89 years old and widowed after 57 years of marriage. And his opening uh, question to my audience to consider was, what is in place the moment, uh, the morning you wake up and do not need to go to work. More juicy nuggets that he shared was, courage gives us hope. And you know, like when we're watching firemen or police or brave leaders risk their lives, it, um, you know, they're using their mental strength and spiritual health to protect us. Um, or we may even know somebody who was um, uh, desperately injured and they use their spiritual strength to overcome their odds of recovery and have a rich story of hope to share with others. Well, Dr. Bob's rich source of courage is his faith and um, it helps him to make peace with his neighbors but it also gives them um, courage to serve in difficult situations. Now, he replenishes his day with a reflection back, a look within, and a look ahead um, for, yeah, look ahead. So uh, he, and since his wife died, he, sees himself as having a new beginning and finds this perspective nourishing. That's a unique viewpoint. Well, my sister-in-law actually kind of did the same thing. Uh, after my brother passed on, she signed up for swimming classes and painting classes as if she had a new lease on life, things, doing things that she couldn't do before. And I was proud of her. So I had a profoundly moving experience while attending the Mayfair in Dallas, Texas, and it's why I do the work I do. Profound experiences tend to change us, don't they? And it's now connected to being true to myself. I love doing unique things and, or, or 
other people doing unique things and found the most amazing jewelry designed by a geometry teacher. He was way back in the South 40. And um, I was enamored with his uh, designs. And I tried on a set of his rings and something moved in my gut. I took them off, put them back on, and it moved again. I left there bewildered and so touched. Later, when starting the coaching academy, our starting day assignment was to bring to class a nature story, uh, something out in nature that catches our attention. And <clears throat> the story uh, was describing an object in nature that captures our attention. So my story was about the unique and valuable ring um, the I talked about the refinement, the sparkle, the durability, the beauty, the intensity and color, the strength and quality. Then, as we shared how we saw ourselves on the inside with our colleagues, it became such a precious moment as we stood in a circle and shared what uh, our inner spark is. No one had ever asked me to share my soul before, and it was so precious. I want you and your friends to discover your inner spark so you are energized daily and where every day feels right. Now, I've shared three key strategies from my inner spark 90 day discovery where friends allow their intuition and instinct to discover their authenticity and the most important values for their life right now. And I'm going to share my whole process with you as we conclude. So, you know, the steps, would you like that? You want to know more? Okay. So I'll go through this quickly and you don't need to take notes, but I have a summary of all the steps I'm going to show you here. And um, right now I just want, to, oh, I think I, yeah. So the result will be using your deep self-knowledge and the outcome is having unshakable confidence. Because when you know what God put inside of you, nobody can argue with that. So um, you start with, what do you love to do? Add to that your personal qualities, like your um, personality or characters, your hot buttons, your aspirations, you know, those wishes and dreams and desires, and then add your values along with your guiding principles and the result, oh, and wrap it up in a, in a nature metaphor and endless joy is the result when you're living from your inner spark. Now, I promised you at the beginning that I would show you how you can get more. And if you liked what you got out of this session, you're going to love what I brought along for you because it will give you everything I didn't have time to share today. And it is the inner spark 90 day discovery where you will learn uh, to allow your intuition and instinct to uncover your authenticity, who you are on the inside. The re resulting benefit will be uh, clarity on what matters most to you, eliminate your frustration, and create alignment, and the result are fulfillment and joy with what you value. So here's my inner spark. I am precious jewel of wisdom. I'm colorful collaborator, motivator, and learner. I am a tranquil, authentic, and pure inspirer. I light fires. Now, um, don't forget I offer you a free resource list of uh, things I've put together over the years. And I have a book that if you request me, I can um, uh, autograph it and send you a copy uh, after uh, you pay for it. And um, I hope you get everything you need 
in having a res resourceful, uh, marvelous retirement. And uh, here's my contact information and uh, the link. Hmm, I thought I had a link here for the page on my website. It's um, SharonRolf.com slash inner, I-N-N-E-R dash spark. And you can find um, how to proceed in uh, checking out how to find your inner spark. Thank you for being here today. And I, I think this is so much good information that nobody's really telling us that much. And I hope that you enjoyed it and share it with your friends and neighbors. <laughs>